Good morning, and welcome to presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish as we celebrate Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of Christ. If you're visiting with us today, welcome, and we invite you to join us for worship again. During the Mass, we ask that you do not sing along with the songs, but invite you to listen to the words and allow it to help you to enter into the prayer. Please rise as you are able. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him, when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, what a great joy it is for us all to be gathered here to give God praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings that he's given to us. And on top of all those blessings this morning, in a special way, uh, not just for us, but for a few of our members, we have three candidates, our RCIA candidates, who will be joining the church, coming into full communion. And because of that, some parts of the Mass will be changed, which is usually done at the Easter Vigil. But we're going to do that today instead. And so as we gather together, one of the things that we're going to skip is the penitential act because we're going to do the baptismal, we're going to renew our baptismal promises together um, later on. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, my brothers and sisters, let us together say the glory, Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the midst, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. God has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed the children within you. Established peace on your borders and feeds you with finest wheat. God sends out word to the earth and swiftly runs the command. God makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. God has not dealt thus with other nations, has not taught them divine decrees. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I shared with uh, those uh, of you who, well, not those of you, but uh, those who were watching our live stream of the Mass last night that, you know, usually, that yesterday morning I had run off, to, uh, run off, I had gone over to Transfiguration. I didn't run off over there. I went to Transfiguration, our, one of our uh, neighbors. And I was there because I wanted to see how they had their cameras set up. So we had one camera up there and also smile. So I needed to make sure that, you know, uh, I knew how to configure our system so that we can get it live streaming. So I didn't have to use my cell phone anymore. So that we can capture more than just uh, the ambo and the altar, but actually see people in the pews. But yesterday was a full day too, so I, can, I uh, snuck in there right before Mass. I saw how they put their system together, then I had to sneak back out. And after I left, I'm like, well, I'm going to have a busy day. I probably won't have time for lunch, so I should probably eat breakfast. And I usually don't eat breakfast because by the time I get to it, it's usually around 9 a.m. and then lunch is what, just a few hours later, so it kind of ruins my appetite. So I decided, well, I'm going to eat breakfast because I probably, I'm probably going to skip lunch and I probably won't eat it until after dinner, uh, dinner time again. So as I was getting into my car and leaving, I'm like, all right, what, what do I want? It's got to be fast. Burger King, all right? Get a croissant, which, oh, breakfast patties, yummy. And so as I, as I was in my car, starting to drive, I started to think to myself, all right, there's a lot of ways I can get there. And the closest one that I know of is off 36 in White Bear, right? So from Transfiguration, I'm like, all right, I can make a straight shot through Century, hit 36 and go down to White Bear, or I can go down to Larpenter from Century, then hit McKnight and then go across to 36 and then go, go from there. And I was, that was the route that I was going on. Uh, I, was, I had decided to take. And as I hit McKnight, I'm like, nah, whatever. I'm going to go all the way down to White Bear and I'll just turn and go north from there. And so that's what I started to do. I hit White Bear uh, for, on Larpenter and it was a red light. And I was in the turning lane. And I started to make a right turn and I had this epiphany like, oh my God, goodness, White Castle's right there. I keep forgetting about it because I hardly, I don't think about White Castle for breakfast, you know. I usually go there from sliders. So I'm like, I'm going to go to White Castle. So after I made the right turn, I quickly made a U-turn around the island and uh, then went to uh, White Castle and ordered myself something from their breakfast menu. It was pretty good, I got to say. And for those of you who aren't fast food fans, well, I, I took the healthy route. I went with wheat, not white. But this, this is all to say that, you know, when we, uh, in our lives, as we prepare for a journey or when we think ahead for our day, we plan on what we need uh, to nourish us to make it through the day, right? And especially when we're, when we're taking long trips. And for many of us now, you know, one of the commodities that we have is, you know, being able to stop at a fast food place to get something quick and then jump back on the road. But as I, when I was younger, growing up, 
one of the things that my mom would traditionally pack for us is sticky rice. So sticky rice, not your na uh, normal uh, grain of rice with extra water that makes it uh, very glutinous and sticky. That's not what I mean by sticky rice. You know, there's a different grain that you can cook and it sticks together so that you know, when you're, you use your hands to eat it, it's not sticking all over your hand, but it sticks together. And so she, we would usually make sticky rice, throw it in a basket, and then you know, bring some protein along. And so for us, it was boil, boiled chicken with uh, salt and pepper and uh, some lime. It's really good, you guys gotta try it. And so, so that's our, that was our traveling food, right? Food for the journey. And so I know there's uh, people have other traditions too, right? Beef jerky, and you, you, know, you just throw it in the car. So another thing that my mom likes to do is just keep sunflower seeds in there, and so she has something to chew on, right? And so we all have these different traditions of what we carry with us as nourishment on these journeys. But then today, what we are also reminded of is that we have another food for the journey that we're on. And that's the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Eucharist, which is the reason why we come to Mass, so that we can give God praise and thanksgiving for he's given to us, but also so that we can receive this food from heaven because we are all still on a journey, right? And where is it that we are going? Do you know? Where is it that we are going? Cody, what do you think? Heaven, I hope, he said, right? I'm sorry, I hope you are. And then that's where we should all be focusing on our goal. That we should all be desiring to go to heaven because that's where Jesus is, right? This is why we gather together to pray and give God thanks so that in turn he can bless us in our lives so that we may have the strength we need to keep fighting the good fight as we go uh, stay on the straight and narrow path. But not just that too, he recognizes that because we are uh, a physical pe a people, right? we have bodies and a soul, he recognizes that we need food for this journey as well. So we have the word of God, which is food. Yes, it is food for the soul. But then he also gives us this bread from heaven. All right, his very body, which we hear in the gospel reading. Unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will not have life in me. So he's already telling us that he knows who we are and that we need this sustenance. And that's what, this is why we eat meals, right? We need food for our souls, for our bodies, so we can have strength to continue to live, so our bodies can live. But then this, uh, this flesh and this blood that he gives to us, he knows that what he's saying to us is not to say, hey, take my finger and chew on it for a little while and then give it to the next person. He's, that's not what he's saying at all, right? He says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. That is what he says. And this is the reason why so many of his, his disciples turn away from him because you know, in Jewish tradition is the law was, it forbade uh, cannibalism, which is good, and not to eat anything that uh, has blood in it. So, you know, for those of you who like your steaks uh, medium rare or even rare, you know, that's a no-no, right? So even Jews to this day don't eat anything that is still bleeding. They cook everything, thor uh, everything thoroughly. But what our Lord is trying to say when he gives us, when he says this to us, eat my flesh and drink my blood, is that he means it. Because when those disciples leave, he doesn't try to stop them and say, hey, oh, here, here's what I mean by that. He doesn't do that. He lets them go. Because they were unwilling to stay with him to understand what he means. And this is why at the Last Supper, our Lord gives us to himself by the breaking of bread and the cup of uh, of, no, of thanksgiving, his, uh, the wine turned into uh, his very uh, blood again. And for us as uh, Catholics, we need to really understand that what we receive at the Mass is truly just that, what we profess, his body and his blood, even though it may still look and taste as like bread and wine. But how do we get over this stumbling block then? How do we get over this? Why, this thing that I eat and I drink, it still tastes like bread and wine. How can this be the body and blood of Christ? Well, let's think about this, my brothers and sisters. 
Many of you have been to a doctor, uh, have had uh, doctor's appointments before in the past, right? Or maybe some of your uh, family members have t told you to take vitamins, right? Drink, eat this pill, eat this gummy bear, eat, uh, take this drink, because it has all these things in it that you need. And so we just take their word for it, right? Like, well, someone smart put it together, and if they said that these vitamins are in there, it's, it's got to be true. We pay them big bucks for it, and we pay money for this thing. So it's got to be true, you know? What they say that uh, this thing contains must be real. And so I eat it so that I can get better, healthier. And so if we are willing to listen to another person who is not perfect, tell us what we need to eat and drink so that we can be healthy, then shouldn't we also listen to Jesus when he tells us what he said in the gospel? Take this and eat of it, this is my body. Take this and drink of it, this is my blood. Who should we be truly listening to if we had to choose between a person like you and I or Jesus himself? And I hope the answer would be Jesus. And this is why we as Catholics believe what we believe, that the Eucharist is the very body and blood of Christ. And again, I explain all this because you know, many of our uh, Protestant brothers and sisters and those non-Christians, and unfortunately some, uh, also some of our own brothers and sisters uh, who are Catholic, don't really understand and grasp this understanding. That what takes place here at the altar is what we say takes place. This piece of bread and this wine, this cup of wine, becomes the very body and blood of Christ. And so we truly need to understand this, my brothers and sisters, because if we don't understand it, how are we going to explain it to those who ask you, what is this? Why do you do what you do? We need to understand this. And it's important for us to understand this, my brothers and sisters, too, because there's so many people who have fought and who have died to protect the Eucharist. Now, I love food, all right? And even my most favorite food, I'm not going to die over. You know, if someone takes it and throws it on the ground, I'm not going to pick it up and eat it again. It's like, <laughs> I'll go get another one. I might be upset and angry, but I'll just go get something, uh, something else. But the very body and blood of Christ, should that fall on the ground or go uh, someplace where it's not supposed to go, you know, I as a priest and you as the faithful, we are called to protect it. This is why you, uh, you know, not just anyone can be a Eucharistic minister. You need to be trained so, so that you know what to do when uh, the Eucharist falls on the ground. We don't just sweep it into the garbage, no. We take it and then we either consume it, eat it, or we dispose of it appropriately. And that's enough for another story. We don't just throw it into the garbage, we can't. Not if we say that this is the body of Christ. What a shame it would be if we throw Jesus in the garbage. But also, my brothers and sisters, this food from heaven is also the reason why today we have this great celebration of Corpus Christi. But not just that, but this is the reason why we are celebrating our three candidates who have been waiting for so long to, be, to come into the church. Theophilus, Cody, and Stephen. Now, these three young men who were supposed to be received into the church at the Easter Vigil, waited a few, uh, couple extra months, and they're still here, thank God, because they just truly desire to receive our Lord in the sacraments. And so for us, this should be a source of motivation, these three young men, that they did not give up, as we heard uh, from the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, how in Moses reminds the people that for 40 years these peop uh, the, the faithful continued to follow after our Lord amidst all the struggles that they went through. And although they didn't have to wait 40 years, these three young men, they still waited patiently, not knowing when this would happen, when they would be able to come into the church. And so we rejoice for them. We ought to rejoice and we should also look to them to be a model for us how to be steadfast in our faith. Because if these three young men who aren't yet Catholic had been so, uh, had persevered for so long, well, for us of who have been practicing the faith, shouldn't we have been doing the same thing with them? 
And so what a great joy it is for us to be able to finally bring you three young men into the church to be a part of us fully uh, as Catholics. And so to start this off, we're going to have a baptism. So one of these young men have been, you know, raised Catholic, but he has never been baptized. And so we're going to baptize him first and then have him join the rest of the two, his two brothers so that they can make a profession of faith. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray to Almighty God for our brother, Theophilus, who, are, who is asking for baptism. He has, called, he has called them and brought them to this moment. May he grant him light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the church. May he give him the new life of the Holy Spirit, whom we are about to call down on this water. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Michael, pray, pray for, for us. us. Holy Angels of God, pray, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Pray for us. Saint Andrew. Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Stephen. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray, pray for, for us. us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, Lord deliver us, we pray. pray. From all evil, from every sin, from everlasting death, by your incarnation, by your death and resurrection, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver, deliver us, us, we, we pray. pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Make this font holy by your grace for the new birth of your children. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, Christ graciously. hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, Christ graciously, graciously hear us. Hear us. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of, Is out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for it the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to a new birth of innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Theophilus, now I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I hope you will respond favorably. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Theophilus, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The white garment. Theophilus, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. So as he's pre preparing to put on this white garment, my brothers and sisters, what this represents is when you were baptized yourselves as a, young, as a child and for myself, so now don't get scandalous, Underneath my vestment, I wear a white robe too. And as I put this on every time I celebrate Mass and when we baptize someone, we put this on because what this represents is we put on Christ, who is the light. We're being purified. And so just like when you clean your hands, the dirt and stains are washed off. So when we put this white garment on, as Theophilus just put on, is to represent that in his own life. Theophilus, ye have been enlightened by Christ, walk always as children, as a child of the light, and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. And so this part, my brothers and sisters, this baptismal candle, the same thing as you had received in your own life, is lit from this Easter candle. It would have been a lot more beautiful during the Easter vigil because things it would have been completely dark when they would have received this light. And this light on, on, at this Easter candle represents the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. And being this candle that was given to Theophilus that he holds in his hands now is lit from that same candle because now that light of faith, which is Jesus Christ himself, now dwells in the heart of, uh, and soul of Theophilus who carries Christ in him uh, at this moment. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now we'll head back to the sanctuary. Now I invite everyone to stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to newness of life. 
Let us now renew our own baptismal promises when we, when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. So now at this time, those same questions that I asked Theophilus individually, now I ask of all of you, and I hope that you will all respond favorably. My brothers and sisters, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject, the, do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? So at this time, I invite forward Cody and Stephen and your sponsors. Now, now these are the other two young men who have been waiting. They have been baptized before in a... Uh, in another Christian faith, but in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as well. So that's why they don't have to be baptized. But now what they all need to do together is to be received into the church and to be confirmed. Cody and Stephen, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You have been invited to come forward with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. If you are ready to do this, I invite you now to make an act of, uh, to make your profession of faith. Cody and Stephen, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. So now I speak to all three of you. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and have and you have become members of Christ and of, us, and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously, graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord.
Stephen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be, uh, peace be with you. No, no pressure on my part. I just need to make sure I say the right words. <laughs> Cody, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Theophilus, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And brothers and sisters, let us welcome our, brother, uh, our new brothers into the Catholic Church. Knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to him as his beloved children, let us bring to him now these petitions. For the Church, the Body of Christ, that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice which gives life to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the redemptive power of Christ's Eucharistic sacrifice will extend to the hearts and minds of all those who govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those baptized and confirmed today that the graces of the sacraments they have received will inspire and strengthen them to live the new life of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our synod process would open our hearts to reach out to our brothers and sisters in love, especially those suffering due to the pandemic, violence, and social injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers, caregivers, and first responders, may they and their families be protected and strengthened by the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those homebound and shut in, that they will not succumb to loneliness and despair, but be drawn to Christ's presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from cancer, respiratory illnesses, and other ailments, may they find healing and comfort in the name of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life, and for those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mark Bowman, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray also in a special way for uh, these three young men who were just received into the church, who will receive the Eucharist for the very first time. And not just them, we also pray for our first communicants. Are those our students who have also been waiting to receive the Eucharist and will receive him next week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great love for us, you gave us your only Son to save us, to nourish us, and to give us life eternal. And so now we turn to you with these prayers and petitions and ask you to make them your own through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the altar. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this one? So far 
surpassing hope or thought. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Had I but Mary's sinless heart to love thee with my dearest King, oh, with what bursts of fervent praise thy goodness, Jesus, would I sing. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, see upon the altar placed the Victim of divinest love, let all the earth below adore and join the choirs of heaven above. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love. love thee more and more. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he, is, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And, with angels, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and prove this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who are unable to receive at this time, especially those who are watching from home or wherever you are, I invite you now to, invite, uh, to ask our Lord, who is truly present in our midst, body and blood, to enter into your hearts, to enter into your souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him says the Lord the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood Remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, Remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray.
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. So just a few announcements. A uh, reminder about Mass times. <clears throat> I think many of you are aware that 9.30 a.m. Mass is a public Mass. That's why you're here. Praise God for that. Uh, but also there's uh, Wednesdays at 8 a.m. and Fridays at 8.45 a.m. So I'm not necessarily speaking to you, but because we're live streaming, for those of you who are uncomfortable with coming to a larger gathering, I invite you then to instead come to weekday Mass. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays are not public Masses. Um, this coming Saturday, June 20th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Kenny Hall, our parish, along with American Red Cross, will be hosting a blood drive. Only appointments will be taken, no walk-ins. So uh, I invite you, if you would like to give blood for this uh, ministry, to uh, make an appointment online. Again, no walk-ins will be taken, only appointments. And as I had mentioned earlier, please continue to pray for our First Communion students who are preparing to receive our Lord Jesus Christ for the first time uh, this coming weekend. And also uh, continue to pray for our Confirmation students as well as we, uh, as we prepare them to receive their own Confirmation. And as many of you may have already seen and heard, our, our beloved uh, Ashley Way, who had passed away back in uh, just last month, her funeral arrangements are uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. So a drive-by visitation will take place in our parking lot up here from 3 to 6 p.m. So it's a drive-by, so if you come, stay in your car, and there will be staff here to direct you to where you need to go. Um, I encourage those of you who uh, want to say uh, some words or express some words of condolences to Tom, to Ashley's family, Tom, and the, um, to come during this drive-by visitation. And also, if you want to say a prayer for Ashley at her, uh, with her remains, to use this time to do it, because at the funeral service itself, there will be no prior visitation. Um, and also because, as you know, as you can see in front of you, many pews are blocked off. It's because we are limited to who, how many people we can have. And so I would ask you to prayerfully consider uh, let, allowing Ashley's family and close friends to attend the funeral service on Tuesday uh, so that they can have a place to sit down, especially those who might be traveling from out of town, and, um, and to rather instead either come here and watch from your car the live stream or to come to the visitation instead uh, so that, again, uh, her family and close friends will be able to come in and be able to take part in this funeral service for her. Have a blessed day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. At the Lamb's high feast we sing praise to our victorious King who has washed us in the tide Flowing from his pierced side, praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest.
is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise And I will raise